Lawrence Krauss, our guest, he's a renowned physicist. He's written a book, A Universe from Nothing, which has had uh, great praise, great respect. Ian McEwan was here, that Scottish lad, oh. not long ago, and he says that we have been living through a revolution in cosmology as wondrous as that initiated by Copernicus. Here is the essential, engrossing, and brilliant guide. It was nice of him to write that. I guess it? so, but written by you. So, as you know, uh, many people think it is evil to even question whether or not there is a God, a Jesus, a Buddha, a Muhammad. You know, it amazes me, and in fact, that response is amazing, that it's evil to question. I mean, a number of countries, including Canada, have had, had troops in, in, in Afghanistan because they're, because they're trying to combat a group of people who are fundamentally mm -hmm. trying to suppress people's rights be, and say it's evil to question. Yet, when you, try, when you question in this country, people say it's evil. Questioning is perhaps the greatest gift we have as human beings. And if you just try and honestly question without attacking, how can that be evil? It should be revered, not reviled, because if, you, if, if, there's, if there are things that are not open to question, then, boy, we've diminished ourselves as human beings. Well, do you think we can have a, a personal God, or an impersonal God, a personal God, and still believe in a universe from nothing? Well, Is it possible? I, look, if, if your theology isn't consistent with the evidence of reality, <laughs> then, then, then you've got problems. Even Moses mm -hmm. Maimonides said that uh, uh, almost a thousand years ago. He said, as he put it, the scriptures are absolutely true, but if the evidence of science disagrees with the scriptures, you better re-examine your interpretation of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So, if you feel the need to believe in, in, in some creator, who, even a personal creator, if you, if in order to do that you are required to believe that the universe is 6,000 years old, you better re-examine your beliefs because you're a hypocrite if you get in a car or, open, or turn on a toaster because the very same laws of, of nature that tell you how the car works tells you that the, the, that the earth isn't 6,000 years old. Mm -hmm. So, How old you, is the earth, do you think? Well, the earth is about four and a half billion years old. Four and a half, and a half billion. billion years. So we're relatively young, because the universe is about 13 billion years old, 14 billion mm -hmm. years old, their galaxy is about 12 billion years old. So we're relative newcomers, which is required because we had to make all those atoms in your body by other stars exploding so that the stars died, so you'd be fortunate So I'm to be a star here. child in a sense. Supernova explodes, <laughs> yeah. and I'm made of stardust, and you you're made stardust. of stardust we, in a little part. Yeah. What is this about the right left hand? Well, this could be one, this could be carbon, hydrogen, it, it, and this could be well, helium, or well, what? It could, well, no, even the, even the same carbon atoms can come from different stars, because 200 million stars have exploded in our galaxy before, almost before the Earth formed, in order to make all the elements that make up in your body, mm -hmm. and the only way they could get into your body as if their stars were kind enough to explode. So it's quite possible that there are atoms in your body that have not only experienced one of the most brilliant fireworks in the universe, a stellar explosion, once, but they may have gone through many stars. And so that's why they could, the, the atoms in different hands could have come from different stars. If you could ring up Einstein and yes, ask him. I, I channel him all the time. I'm sure you do. <laughs> and ask him uh, about his major blunder. Did he make a major blunder? Was there, was there some area where he was just off? Well, there were areas where he was clearly off. He didn't believe in quantum mechanics, and he mm -hmm. was uh, he, where he didn't accept it, and that was wrong. But he, what he said was his major blunder at the time was he, in order to, at the time he developed his theory of gravity, the universe was static. As you right. point out, everyone thought it was static. But as I point out, gravity sucks. So you can't have a static universe if you have gravity because everything will fall together. So he added some fudge factor to his equations which would produce this repulsive force on large scales that would hold everything together. He called it the cosmological term. And then when later on we discovered the universe was expanding and you didn't need that term, he called it his biggest blunder. Well, we should all have such a big blunder because it turns out <laughs> mm. we now think that that extra term describes the energy that we've now discovered that's governing the universe. So if he'd had the courage of his convictions, he could have predicted it, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. But if everything we know says it is improbable, improbable, uh -huh. that there was one person who designed us, yeah. Incredibly One magic improbable. magic man or woman. Mm -hmm. it's, it's improbable. It's certainly, it's certainly tr not only is it improbable, but even people who say, look, even if you can describe the universe back to the beginning, there had to be some intelligence behind that creation, even if it's done by quantum mechanics. Well, that kind of deism, as you might call it, is very different than the, than the world's religions, which involve a personal God that cares about us, which is clearly completely unrelated to that to that. There's no evidence that the universe is created for us in any way. And so to jump from the idea that there's some intelligence in the universe to the idea that there's a personal God that cares about us, that revealed himself but only to illiterate peasants 2,000 mm -hmm. years ago before there were video cameras to record the miracles, 
it's it's really implausible, and mm -hmm. in fact, it's, in fact, as a, as my friend uh, Steve Weinberg, a Nobel Prize winning physicist, says, it's the yeah. greatest religion is the greatest assault on human dignity he knows about. Because assuming that we're kind of sheep that have that are controlled by a co as as Christopher Hitchens would have said, a cosmic. Saddam Hussein, is, is, yes. is, as far as I can see, is not a very pleasant to thought. Well, the United States of America, your birthplace, uh, may elect a president who believes that Joseph Smith was the true prophet of God, uh, wandering through or the a, desert. Or a president that might that believes that the Earth is six thousand years old and doesn't believe in evolution. Mm -hmm. It's it's terrifying, and I spend a lot of my time involved in science and politics. It's really important in the twenty first century. To, when we face the challenges we face as a global civilization, energy production, the climate, to, to face these things with your eyes wide open. But as to, you know, you can't get elected in the United States of America if you're an atheist. I doubt. No, in fact, uh, actually, maybe you could be an atheist if you're Thomas Jefferson or someone. Well, I don't it, know. Well, nowadays you can. In fact, there was a recent study done by some Canadian and American psychologists, in fact, that showed that atheists are, are, are the most distrusted people next to rapists. In the entire, but in the in in the United States and in Canada, really? by the way, and it's so sad to think of that. Although you know, it it it, it is as you point out, John Mitch Jefferson was probably an atheist. There are probably a lot of presidents that really were, but as you point mm. out, you can't be elected no. without pretending you believe. And right. some of them, unfortunately, like two of the candidates for president, at the very least, clearly b believe in nonsense, mm. in nonsense that some known con man discovered some gold tablets after he'd been convicted before of finding false tre treasure and somehow translated them in the 19th century into 17th century English and that the Garden of Eden was in Missouri. I mean, this is just nonsense. Well, that's going back to Joseph Smith. That's, and, and, and then the we've got this other, other person who's, who's surging in the polls who, believe, who doesn't believe intelligent design, believes that prenatal care is bad and contraception is bad for women based on, on his religious fundamentalism. It is mm -hmm. tremendously scary. The bottom line is, you know, it's uh, another friend of mine, Noam Chomsky, would say, "It's okay. I don't care what people believe. It's what they do that matters." And you know, believing in God is is fine. I don't care what people believe in. But if it makes you do stupid things, then I worry, and I particularly worry if you're running for president. That <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> That's why you call yourself an anti-theist, not an atheist. An anti-theist, which means what? Well, what it means is that I don't have the presumption to say there's absolutely no God. I can't prove it. Right. But what I can say is I certainly want to, wouldn't want to live in a universe with one. The universe is far okay. more exciting to me and more in, enlightening and more, and more invigorating without a God. It's the, uh, the idea that people can somehow find spiritual solace in the idea that they are being controlled by some cosmic puppet maker versus the idea that, that we have this brief moment in the sun and, and our, mm -hmm. the meaning in our lives is one we create. And we, and, and we have this great ability to think about the universe. Let's, let's make the most of our brief moment in the sun. I just did a show with uh, um, a woman who rescues uh, chimpanzees, and Jane Goodall has yeah, been here sure. several times. Yeah. And I know they share something like 98.6 of our DNA. Amoeba, amoebas share a, a large part of our DNA. I mean, there's an incredible line of, of, of evolutionary history that not only demonstrates the, the proof of evolution, but the fact that, and, and some people feel demeaned by the fact that humans are animals. But again, why is that demeaning? And it's again, to me, it's exciting to think that, that, we're, that we're so intimately related to everything else, of, uh, every bit of life on this planet. Can we say all life has protein? Protein, it uses the same mechanism, ATP, to, to generate energy. It's all based on DNA. It's all, it all has, shares exactly the, mm -hmm. the same characteristics. And in fact, the characteristics you would predict if you said that there was a single common ancestor, that life arose from the, by a single mechanism. The interesting question, of course, is, is that the only mechanism by which life can arise? Or could it arise by other mechanisms without DNA? It's one of the things my origins project uh, looks at, is, is trying to understand the origins of life as well as... Isn't uh, that the central question of physics? What, why the universe is the way it is? It, it, it's a central question of science, to try and understand why the universe is the way it is and make predictions about it. And to me, the fact that we've come so close to understanding the entire universe and its origins is just remarkable. I, 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 I can't imagine why people wouldn't want to celebrate that and why they'd want to be afraid of that knowledge. Some people would rather that their children not know how the universe works. Mm -hmm. A for lot fear of people, that it, actually. For, yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. for fear that it will affect their faith, then no, and what a, what a, what a disservice to, to children. And in fact, in that sense, I, I would have to say, I agree with, with Richard Dawkins, that in that sense, mm -hmm. much of religion is, is child abuse. Do you get... <laughs> I think. <laughs> Whoa. Do you get threats? Do you get hate mail? 
Uh, I know Dawkins does. Well, I, I don't. I get. I don't get threats that often uh, mm. from string theorists, maybe. But, but uh, I find people are mostly polite, even the ones that disagree with me. I, one of my favorite letters I ever got was one of the, 20 years ago when I first got, started giving public lectures and wrote a book. I got a letter from a woman who said, "I sorry it took me so long to get to you, to talk, write to you, but I had to speak to my minister before I did. I just want you to know you're going to hell." <laughs> yeah, so don't ask. You're just going and that's it. But it is really fascinating to me to read this book. I, I was trying to decide what is uh, the difference between religion and spirituality and then I figured that out. And the difference between science and spirituality. Is that the next question well, or I what? I think science provides a spirituality. That's the problem. People say somehow science takes away spirituality and therefore it demeans our, our, our existence as humans. But it seems to me that what is more remarkably spiritual than, than thinking about the fact that we're here on a lonely planet at the edge of a galaxy with a hundred billion stars that, that, you know, one of the most beautiful spiritual pictures I know of is a picture taken by the Cassini satellite on the other mm. side of Saturn where you can see a total eclipse of the sun. And then if you look carefully between Saturn's rings, you'll see a little pale blue dot and that's the Earth. And the thought that we are there in this fragile planet mm -hmm. in the middle of a dark space to me, is, it just means that we, we really need to understand that we have to protect this planet, how fortunate we are to be mm. on it. You know, so, most astronauts I talk to are with you. They are. They well, come back and they, they may have gone to space with deep faith and they're so mind boggled when they return. By the real universe, which is much more exciting than the universe of myth, myth and fabrication. The real universe is more exciting than science fiction or myth. And that's all I want people to understand and, and celebrate that real universe. Well, and you'll be talking about that at the Woodward Instructional Resources Center at UBC at 815 Saturday night. Yes, I believe I will. I believe you <laughs> will. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, uh, Lawrence Krauss, a universe from nothing.